343 addresses the leaks of Halo 5 coming to PC, a new way for you to earn double XP in Halo Infinite, and an update on some issues for the next flight of Halo Infinite. That and more, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. We got a bit of a mishmash of some Halo news for you guys today, some leaks and rumors, as well as a response from 343, some big moves from a fellow Halo content creator that we should mention about, and we'll probably see more in the future of, and some Halo Infinite news and leaks as well. If you guys like these kind of news and informational kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button, let's know you want to see some more content like this, and it helps feed the algorithm of YouTube because that's how things work. But if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, Make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So you heard me right. There are currently some leaks going around about Halo 5 coming to PC and specifically Steam with this Reddit post talking about games like even God of War from 2018 coming to PC on Steam as well. As, as a user seemed to data mine some information from GeForce Now. If you guys don't know what GeForce Now is, I actually learned about this looking up this news and info. This is basically GeForce's live streaming service where you can basically go into a game and select whatever you want and stream it from the cloud. This is a cloud gaming platform for GeForce. This is not like a storefront or anything like that. This is just a way for you to play your games without having to actually download them and things like that. Especially as cards become more and more scarce and harder to find, this becomes a much more viable option for a lot of people. And the user dynamined a good amount of files and also games that haven't officially been announced yet for Steam, like a lot of various PlayStation games might be coming over to PC as well as seems like Halo as well. Because as we scroll down this list of games that are mentioned within this entire thing, we do see that Halo 5 for PC is part of it right here. So does this mean that Halo 5 Guardians, like the full game is coming to Steam? Well, a previous development update actually kind of touched on this a little bit about Halo 5, especially coming to the Master Chief Collection, because if it was gonna to come to PC, you would think they'd probably add it to the MCC. And they actually mentioned here specifically that Halo 4 is gonna be the last game added to the MCC on PC. So saying, sorry to crush your Halo 5 MCC dreams, but they said that they're not planning to do that right now. But this was posted way, way back in October of last year, so almost a year ago. So did things change? Well, fortunately, community director Sketch actually replied to some of this stuff saying, maybe it was for Halo 5 Forge, but I can confirm there are no plans to bring Halo 5 to PC. We know there are some demand for it, but as we stated before, not in the cards as the studio is fully focused on Infinite and MCC. We'll never say never, but nothing underway currently. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Basically, I think what they mean by the, because currently right now there is Halo 5 on PC, but it's like Halo 5's Forge with like the custom game browser you can play, which hasn't really gotten a whole lot of population on it. It sounds like Sketch is like, well, maybe Microsoft made some deal with NVIDIA to where you can have Halo 5 Forge through this service if they wanted to, but currently there are no plans being done right now by 343 to make Halo 5 come to PC, and I don't really ever plan on it really happening, at least within the next year or two. So I'm assuming you probably want to earn double XP while playing Halo Infinite. Well, it looks like you will be finding a new way to do that by purchasing Kellogg's products. This check back on September 15th, so tomorrow. And essentially they mentioned if you buy any kind of Kellogg's products and you'll probably see a notification on the product itself, you can earn double XP in Halo Infinite, which will help you progress through the battle pass and get your unlocks faster. And since you know I'm all about the details on this channel, guys, of course I had to look into the terms of service for the actual little nitty gritty stuff for you. It says one XP code equals 30 minutes of double XP. You can hold up to 60 hours of double XP per person for this offer. Again, that's 60 total hours where you can maximize your progression through the battle pass of Halo Infinite and get your unlocks so you can flex on all the nubbies who did not decide to eat these little tasty treats. So the way this works is that you go to the website, which we have linked in the description here. Very similar to what we had for the monster promotion a year ago, you go on, you register it, you upload your receipts and each receipt must be submitted separately within 30 days of purchase. The last day to submit a receipt is on March 2nd of 
2022. So I'm sure we have some XP grinders out there that I really want to jump in and get involved with this. Well, this is going to be your best way now to buy in to gain some double XP earn up to 60 hours of double XP to earn your progression through the battle pass even faster. And you're probably going to need a bunch of these double XP kind of boosts, which are going to be within the battle pass itself as well. But it seems like one of the weird things about it is that it looks like when you do activate these double XP boosts, but it does count down while you're in between games as well. 343 did state in a previous blog update, which we covered on the channel here, guys. 343 is currently looking into making it so that maybe you can only have time expire while you're in game rather than waiting in lobbies right now for double xp boosts they will count down during the end of your play session not just in game so you may want to stock up and get your 60 hours in and talking about changes and the flight if you guys remember from a previous tweet from unicheck the tech preview was having a little bit of an issue with the 900 series graphics cards from nvidia and this tweet from Unishek essentially confirms that it's been addressed, meaning I guess it means fixed as it does have a green check mark next to it. But this recent news from Sketch on Reddit kind of says, well, maybe not so much. Sketch replied on Reddit saying that he has an update for it. And unfortunately, it sounds like some 900 series card issues are still present in this upcoming preview build. The team did indeed address the major crash problem that was present during the last technical preview, but as is often in the case of game development, other issues have surfaced. I'm sorry to say that for this next preview, 900 series cards are not supported. I'll share more info as I can get it. The team is continuing to work on bug fixing and polish for this and other areas of the game on the road to release. So that's a big shame, especially for your 900 card users on Nvidia side of things. Obviously it's a little bit of an older card, so I can kind of expect Halo Infinite to run not that great on it, but you, sh you still expect to be able to at least have the game open up and run properly, not crash all the time. It uh, looks like if you guys are looking to play this next flight, you might be having that issue still. And that really awesome bit of news here, guys. Ubernick, our favorite Irish boy and part of the community here, has joined Space Station Gaming as a content creator. If you guys do not remember, Space Station Gaming is a partnered organization with HCS, which was recently announced and we did talk about it on the channel here, guys. And what Nick has said about this partnership that he's done with Space Station Gaming is that it's not going to affect his content or anything like that in any way. He just said that it seems like their values at Space Station Gaming are in line with what he wants to accomplish for himself as well. So you probably will start seeing this more and more with other partner organizations with HCS. I have some of your favorite content creators jump in along with them as well. Obviously, I'm sure each one will probably have their own deals when it comes to how they integrate content creation along with these organizations but i'm assuming this is just the beginning when it comes to content creators jumping in along with the hcs partner teams as well i'm just saying i'm available we'll definitely keep an eye out for that and we'll definitely let you know if anything else pops up in this field and for the last bit of halo infinite news for you guys it looks like a leaker quote unquote i should say kind of more bro trust me kind of moment said that Halo Infinite is going to launch with 23 total maps, which is way bigger than Halo 5 and right up there with like Call of Duty when it comes to the amount of maps dropping for the game, which would be insane. This Charlie Intel article kind of goes into some details about it. And so, I mean, if we get 20 solid maps for Halo Infinite's launch, I think that would probably quell a lot of people's issues when it comes to, like they mentioned here, not having Forge or Co-op, but when you have such a rich, deep multiplayer experience, I think people will be quite excited for it. The thing is though, the person who made this tweet and tweeted this out was in reply to a Call of Duty Vanguard post saying that, oh my God, Call of Duty Vanguard is launching with what, 20 some odd maps? And so he just replies back saying, hey, Halo Infinite is dropping with 23 maps. So uh, Halo is pretty awesome as well. But when I click on the link, the tweet has been deleted. Now, does that mean that the user going like, oh crap, people have found out my info is wrong and I'm just spreading fake news, so I deleted the tweet? Or did he delete the tweet because it actually was legitimate news and it's being picked up and realized, oh God, I need to cut all my sources to make sure I'm not like tied to this at all. This is all, of course, just leaked information. This is the kind of nature when it comes to working with leaked news is that it's kind of just bro trust me kind of stuff. Do I think there's gonna be 23 maps at launch for Halo Infinite? I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna have that many maps. 
Because with Halo's gameplay, you don't need to create that many maps. And for Call of Duty, they develop very specific maps for specific game modes as well, where Halo, most of the time, most maps are designed with all most game modes in mind as well. Like Call of Duty has designated 2v2 maps, but with uh, Halo Infinite, you most likely can play 2v2 on 4v4 maps as well. So that's why you really shouldn't get caught up in the numbers because I don't believe that Halo Infinite will have the same map total as Call of Duty, but I don't think it would be very necessary for Halo to release that many maps. I would love it. Obviously more content, the better. So honestly, I'd like to have much more focused kind of launch of Halo Infinite because if you launch with like 20 some odd maps and like 15 of those or 20 of those even or like 4v4 maps, it's just a little too much, honestly, for me to kind of learn the maps properly. And I just really like to see a more focused launch when it comes to stuff like that. But that's just my opinion. And even if we have a smaller pool of maps at launch, 343 has already stated that they have a year's worth of content coming for Halo Infinite, most likely meaning new maps coming in as well. I would guess probably every other season. That's what would be my hope. But we'll just have to wait until we get that roadmap released for us, guys. So if you're new to the channel and missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got all my Halo news and informational videos right there for you all. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.